today is finally the day I get to drive the Mercia Largo for the first time ever. The V12 finally runs. And with the new titanium exhaust, which doesn't quite fit yet, it sounds incredible. But there was one fairly big issue. After we finished everything with the engine, we bled the clutch to drive it for the first time, but we still couldn't get it in gear. It seems we have an issue with the clutch. Which now leaves me doubting, did I make a mistake when I fitted the clutch to the gearbox? Because if I did, it's the engine out all over again. Hopefully not. This Mercer Largo seemed to be the impossible rebuild. We could have made one of the most expensive trips we've ever done now. But when it's your dream, you do anything to make it happen. This has been my dream since God knows how long. And despite no experience with Lamborghini engines at all, we still made the impossible possible. Yay! But we're just asking for that last bit of luck now to get the clutch working so I can drive it for the first time. Then we can tackle the rest of the issues. Will she start up first time? No. Why do I feel like this is a regular look for Mercer Largo owners? <laughs> the clutch is actually engaging it a little bit, I can tell, because we're on a hill now, and I'm in fourth gear and it's locked. But if I press the clutch down, start moving. So it is engaging a little bit. Let's investigate further. On a manual car, we have a flywheel, a clutch plate, and a clutch cover. The flywheel spins with the engine. And when the clutch is clamped to the flywheel by the clutch cover, that will also be spinning with the engine, which sends drive to the transmission. But to change gear, we need to be able to release the clutch from the flywheel. And this is done by a release bearing. When you push the clutch pedal, the release bearing should push against the springs, which then should release the clutch from spinning against the flywheel, allowing you to put the car into gear. Now the clutch pedal is connected to the release bearing with a hydraulic line, which has fluid in it. If there's any air in that hydraulic line, it might not be releasing the clutch enough for me to put it in gear. Underneath the bonnet is the reservoir here, which also does the brakes, but this line, which is just there, um, that is your clutch line. So if the fluid isn't higher than that clutch line then we could get air into it and when i'm pushing the throttle i'm just when i'm pushing the clutch it could just be pushing air down the line which will give us a spongy pedal and not engage the clutch so i'm gonna fill this up a little bit more just to make sure and then we're gonna go again there's a little cut out in the top of the Mercer Largo, which allows me to fill the reservoir up with some DOT4 fluid. Then we're going to be using this device here to help me bleed the system a second time. It screws onto the reservoir, then inside the bottle we're going to add some more DOT4 fluid. And once we've got a bit of fluid in there, the other line of the bottle takes pressure off the air in the tyre. So now there's air pressure from the air in the tyre going directly into the bottle, which is pushing DOT4 fluid into the brake and clutch reservoir, giving us full pressure. So now I'm gonna raise it up and hopefully, if we crack off the bleed nipple, it will get as much air out of the system as possible. Now there's full pressure in the system. When I crack the bleed nipple up here on top of the gearbox, it should push any air that's in the system out of it. And I'm just cracking that bleed nipple now. There was a few little air bubbles, but now it is only fluid, which is exactly what we needed. So I can tighten the bleed nipple back up and go and test the clutch. Right, round two. Here we go. <clears throat> Come on. Moment of truth. Yeah! I've got gear. I'm in first gear. I'm in first gear. Come on! Let's see if we can go reverse. No! I still can't get reverse. Get first gear. It is really stiff. Verdicts could be we're not getting enough clutch. So hopefully there is a adjustment on the pedal to bring the pedal higher up. Um, 
I'll have a look. You can see at the top of the pedal, it does have a little bit of play in it, but there is an adjustment that you can make. I've just got to loosen off the lock nut and then wind out the pedal, which will take that little bit of play out of it. And hopefully now the release bearing will push the springs enough so it can disengage the clutch, but we'll find out. So there is literally now no play in the clutch. And if I can't get a clutch now, we either need to bleed it again, or there could be an issue with the clutch. Come on, this is the time. Okay, we're running. Moosey go in. <laughs> first gear, first gear. First gear. Oh my god, it could actually work. Third gear. I think it's done it. Reverse, reverse. Reverse. Yes! Again, again. Yeah! The clutch adjustment might have just done it. Reverse. Let's see if we get a reverse one more. Yes! I think we, I think it's working! Come on! We finally cracked it. We've got gears. But there is one more problem with the gear stick. So it doesn't quite go into the bottom gears very well in the gate. And it sits nicely in the gate in the top gears, but not in the bottom. Now this explains the reason why the previous owners cut a hole in the center console so they could access the gear linkage and they can move the gear linkage forward and backwards so then you could get this absolutely perfect. But I think there's another way which is probably going to be easier than stripping apart his center console again and get into that hole. It all makes sense now. This is the reason why we found that hole which was cut out the body of the car by the previous owners. It was to access this gear linkage here to adjust it so you could get the lever sitting perfectly central in the gated zone. But we think there's another way. There's four bolts which are underneath the lever. We're going to loosen them off along with some of the other mounting parts underneath. Then I'm going to get inside. I'll go sit in the car now, try and get the gear stick in line, and then we'll lock it back in place. This might work, or it might not, but it's worth a try. Whoa! Don't eat that. Why not? Have one of these instead. How's that any better? It's just a drink. That's not gonna fill me up. Actually, it's a Y food. There's 26 vitamins and minerals in it, and it'll keep you full until your next meal because it's a meal replacement drink. I'm vegan. There's vegan options. And I'm also lactose intolerant. It's lactose free. And I also can't have gluten. Gluten free. It's also high in fiber, high in protein, and there's no added sugar. I don't even like salted caramel. Well, there's loads of different flavors to choose from. This one's fresh berry. Wow, they do taste good as well. Well, I've been drinking them for years now and they're perfect for people like us who are constantly on the go. Where can I get these from? Well, Liam, I'm glad you asked because you and you at home can find your favorite flavor by grabbing a taster pack with the link in the description box below. And with a discount code, appear code appearing underneath you right now, you're gonna save yourself a nice bit of cash as well on the taster pack. Thanks, Waifu, for sponsoring this video. Let's get this gearbox sorted. That's where it needs to be, there. I held the gear stick in place whilst my dad tightened up the bolts underneath. And that is perfectly in. And we didn't even need to cut a hole in the center console. <laughs> Remember how we found the Ford logo on these indicators and later found out they were off a Mark I Ford Focus. Well, check out this. The only thing Lamborghini about this is, well, that badge. For a new AC display, it's gonna cost you from Lamborghini 1,513 pounds. So I really hope this one's gonna work when I turn the car on. But to be honest, I wouldn't be too bothered if it decided not to work. Check this out. The Rover 45 uses the exact same air conditioning unit. It is exactly the same as the Lamborghini. And if I wanted to buy the AC unit out of a Rover, it would only cost me 24 euros and 20 cents. But wait, 
it gets better than that. This is the interior of a Pagani Zonda. Millions of pounds worth of car. And look what climate control they're using as well. The exact same one they use in the Mercialago and <laughs> the Rover 45. Maybe there was one big discount parts bin for these AC displays at the time. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, we're moving in the right direction now. Another thing that we need, which was quite expensive. The handbrake, which is actually on the right hand side. They do everything backwards in these Mercer Largos. The, the seat belt is on your left hand side and then the handbrake is on your right hand side. This car didn't come with a handbrake. I had to buy one second hand. And here it is. This thing was 1,000 pounds. And I dread to think what other cars this handbrake was used on. But unfortunately, I couldn't cross-reference any part numbers on this. So maybe it is Lamborghini only. The cable is held in with this little knob and a split pin. And then the handbrake slots down the right-hand side of the driver's seat. There's a little spade connector, which is for the handbrake light on the dashboard, which tells you when the handbrake's on or off. And then it's just a simple case of bolting it all in. And of course, to put all the lever over the top of it as well. And this lever works in a weird way. Way. But before I show you that, we've got to connect all the cables up. There is a separate caliper for the handbrake and the cable slides into it and is held in with a little C-clip. We've still got a lot of work to do on the suspension and all the suspension arms, but for now, that's the least of our worries. We want to get this thing moving. Now you can see the root of this handbrake cable. It goes from the caliper, through the diff mounting brackets, goes alongside the engine and then connects up underneath. And I think this is why the handbrake was expensive. Actually, no, the handbrake was expensive because it's Lamborghini. But you pull it up like that, uh, and then it goes all floppy, even though that should be. Solid. Yeah, that's solid. And then to get it off, you have to, I think, pull it up, press the button down, and then down. Yeah. Yeah. Working handbrake. I think it's ready to drive. I've never wanted a car to start up and drive so much in my life. This whole journey has been incredible. We won't be able to drive the car far though as the tires are really old and there's still a lot more to do to get it roadworthy. But to rebuild my dream car from the state it was in with my dad means so much. And even if it only manages to roll out my unit, that's a huge achievement. Hard work really does beat talent. Look, I don't want to talk. How you try and press the kid and read it, you was soft. Pedal to the metal, you ain't catching me in park I just hit the stop, I don't wanna speak Talking all that good, so I just hit you with the please Running up the score like Tyreek, I'm going deep Watch me how I'm saucing, I be spreading it with ease First time driving any Mercer Argo And it's my one that I've rebuilt with my dad This is... This is special. To be but perplexed, cause I don't really see nobody close to me. Hopefully, so I wish I could open it up, but we can only drive it through the car park. So it's first gear, maybe second gear. Yes! <laughs> Gifted with a vision and precision. I'm just trying to make it high key. Might be breaking free like I was iron in some Nikes. Uh, this is not making beats and spitting crack versus pretty likely. Yeah. Oh, it says I got half a tank now. I've got a tank of fuel now. How much did you have before? In a quarter. Some kids, but pretty now. I got these arrows beeping at your boobs. How you try and press the kid and really you was soft. All you know is capping, homie, you don't know the law. Pedal to the metal, you ain't catching me in park. I just hit the stop. I don't want to sit with ease. You gonna see the peace. You gonna see the... We've got a few faults and a few things which, I don't know, it's Italian, but... The airbag lights on. I don't know why the airbag lights on. We've got we're gaining fuel. <laughs> We've got more fuel. Uh, oil pressure's looking good. Oil temps looking good. And we've now done three miles since we've uh, had the engine running. But another thing, it keeps thinking that the driver door is open when it's closed. The good thing, we get all gears. 
but as we were driving back, we struck a problem. We're getting an oil light coming on, which is not good. Um, only comes on sometimes. If I rev it, you can see the oil pressure. So, oh, not the oil light. As soon as I come down on the revs, as soon as it sits here, oil light goes on. Oil light comes on. Like there's no oil pressure at low RPM. Definitely doesn't seem good. It's definitely something not good. Don't know how long that lasted, but it was good whilst it lasted. But we could be low on oil, so let's just give that a check first. I think I think it might just be low. It didn't look like but... it was leaking or anything. I don't think it, I didn't think it was smoking either. It just smoked a bit when I pulled off the one time. Yeah. I don't think there's any oil coming out, but we've got low, we, well, an oil light keeps flashing on and off, which either could be oil pressure's low. The oil pump that we rebuilt is, well, <laughs> we don't know whether that's good or not, but that was, it could just be low oil. So we're just gonna check the, the oil now. And then if that works, go out again. Oh my God, this is red hot. <sighs> Should be warm enough now to check them off. It's loads in it. Let me see if it will start again. Will it start after driving it? Will it have charged the battery? <laughs> the answer is no. <laughs> I don't know. I wonder if the, the oil switch is okay. The, just the, the actual switch on the... Because oh, right. like, yeah, that yeah. could be at fault, couldn't it? It looks like I've still got a little bit more to solve. The battery's not charging. And I'm hoping this oil issue isn't going to be something drastically bad but touch wood but thanks so much for watching this video i'm i'm so happy we got to drive it for the first time if you enjoyed it hit that subscribe button hit that thumbs up button and i'll see you in the next video peace out can you check the oil in the engine no it's no well we can you can open that yeah there's not a ditch stick now is there Are you that's <laughs> well <laughs> like a truck i just can't deny it